All right, so as we said, it's gonna be this outermost shell that's going to be reactive. And the uh, extent to which it's going to be reacted is to fill this valence shell. So what we say is that elements want a filled valence shell. Of course, uh, elements don't have desires, so they don't really want things. It's just that this is the most stable configuration. So when we say something wants something, it's just that it's the most stable this way. Um, so if we think about our periodic table, and in congruence with our kind of electron configurations over here on the eighth group, everything here already has a filled valence shell. So this is what's known as our noble gases. And they call them noble because they're so noble that they don't really interact with anybody else. Um, and so in this case, they don't want to lose or gain electrons. Right, because they already have a filled valence shell. They're already where they want to be. If we think about one column over, they're just one short. Um, we'll call these the halogens. And so what they're going to want to do is gain one electron. And thus, their charge will be negative one, right? Because they're going to gain an extra electron. And then, of course, over here, we're going to want to gain two electrons for a charge of negative two, right? So that we can get to that failed shell. And then we get all the way to the left over here. We call these our alkali metals. So if you think about lithium, if you think about getting it all the way to neon, it'd have to gain seven electrons, um, which is going to be very unstable because you've got a whole lot of negative charge. So what lithium does is it kind of cheats a little bit. Instead of gaining seven electrons to have a filled shell, it just loses its outermost electron. And thus, it, that, that, then that core shell becomes the valence shell, and it's already all filled up. And same thing for this whole column. They're all going to just lose an electron for a charge of plus one. And then finally over here, we have the alkali earth metals. And they're gonna wanna lose two electrons for a charge of plus two, right? We already went over these charges, but now you're kind of seeing the reasoning why behind it. Um, and it's pretty crazy how the periodic table and quantum mechanics came together. Um, so let's just take a look at an example of some of these. So fluorine, for uh, example, has the charge of F minus. If you find fluorine, um, you know, in nature or pretty much anywhere, it's mostly going to exist as fluoride, which is F minus. And so if we think about the electron configuration of F minus, first we can think about just writing out the electron configuration of F, which would be 1s2, 2s2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2p five, but now since it's got a negative charge, it's gained an electron, and so it will be 2p6. Um, oxygen, if you got it by itself, it would be O2 minus, and so if we think about oxygen, it's right over there, um, so we can write out helium, right, don't have to write that out, and then 2s2, and then oxygen has um, four, electrons in its p shell so 2p4 but now we've got a negative two charge so we want to add two electrons so it goes to being 2p6 magnesium most often found as magnesium 2 plus if we think about it where it is on the periodic table it's right there so we can then use neon as the noble gas right above it and then we can go 3s2 but now it's lost um, two electrons. So we're going to get rid of these two electrons. So we just have the electron configuration of neon, which if we want, we could also write out as helium 2s2, 2p6. Or we could have just let it as neon in those brackets. Uh, another example is bromide, right? Bromine most often exists as Br minus. If we think about where bromine is, on our periodic table, it's right there. Noble gas right above it is argon. Then after that, we are going to go to the 4s2. 
Then after that, we have the D electrons, 3D10. And then bromine, if it were neutral, it'd have uh, 4P5. But since we have a negative charge, that means we have an extra electron. So we go to 4P6, right? And what you notice with all of them is they all have a filled outer shell. They all have essentially here eight electrons in their valence shell. Right, so they all want to have a filled valence shell. Most of the time, that's eight electrons. The kind of main exceptions are hydrogen and helium, which only have that one s orbital, so they can only go up to two electrons. But pretty much everything else in our main block elements is going to want to have uh, eight valence electrons, or more simply put, a filled valence shell.